Hello and welcome to this video. This is 42 Scott Joplin works ranked. So let me explain what this is about. Uh, a couple weeks ago, also by the way, I have a little puppy here that I'm babysitting. So if a little puppy starts making noises, it's my little puppy. Her name is Cookie. She's a Boston Terrier. She's like eight months old or maybe seven months old. So a couple weeks ago, I did a ranking of uh, 10 of what I considered the most famous Joplin works. And I rated uh, Solace number one. And then I, I went down the line. You can view that video if you haven't already. So let's take those 10 works that we already dealt with, and we'll deal with those again. But let's take those 10 works, starting with Solace, all those 10 works that we ranked in, in the previous video, let's set those aside for now, and let's just deal with the other, I count 42 pieces. Sorry if I accidentally left any out. I think I got all the rags. Um, I'm not including any songs with words or any of that. Uh, sort of thing. Uh, so I, I have all his rags and marches and waltzes. And this on the screen here is the 42 works uh, that I have compiled here and they're listed in chronological order, in the order of composition. And these are all the 42 works that were not the works included in that famous list of 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this 42 uh, pieces here, this list of 42 pieces, and we're going to play a little game. I want you to take, take these 42 pieces, if you're familiar with them, okay, if you're not, you might want to do some listening, and arrange, uh, okay, you, you have to only pick 10, only 10. So imagine if you were uh, judging a competition and you had 42 applicants. I actually made a mistake. I didn't change 41 to 42 because I found an extra rag in there. So anyway, if you had 42 applicants, each with a different composition submission, and you're the judge and you have to judge all these pieces, you have to pick 10 from the 42. You have to list those in chronological order. Don't list them in order of greatness yet, but list them in chronological order. So right here is the, the list of 10 that I've come up with in chronological order, which, which I would consider my 10, if I had to pick 10 from those 42 this is what those 10 would be. I mean, this is a hard choice. This is a hard choice, but I, I really thought about it and I thought, yeah, these are most likely what I think are Joplin's best works, best 10 works out of those 42. These, this is what I pick here. Sunflower Slow Drag, The Strenuous Life, The Chrysanthemum, Eugenia, Rose Leaf Rag, Fig Leaf Rag, Gladiolus Rag, uh, The Nonpareil, Sugar cane and Paragon Rag. Now, once you have your list of 10, your list of 10 probably won't be the same, exactly the same as my list of 10. So what you want to do is, if, if you want to play the game, try to pick 10 out of those 42, list them in chronological order. And then the final step is to arrange them in order of greatness. Arrange them in order of greatness from uh, the, the best to the least best, one through 10. So we're gonna start with number 10. Number 10, Paragon Rag. Paragon Rag from 1909. <laughs> Really 
warm up today and this dog is uh, making me so I can't play very well, but Paragon rag, just a great rag. I would rate that about number, yeah, number 10. Uh, here's, here's the B section. B section here, after that A section, which I didn't play very well for you, goes. sort of bluesy kind of style uh, sliding keys from black to white. So it's a technique used a lot in, in early blues and, 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 and boogie even. Uh, it's used a lot in that kind of style of music. Uh, beautiful, beautiful piece, great piece. Uh, I, in, in my recording on YouTube, my first recording of Paragon Rag, I crossed hands on the trio section. You don't have to do that. That's just something I did to be uh, fancy. So Paragon Rag, great rag, highly recommended. I would grade it number 10. Number nine, Sugar Cane. Sugar Cane. Sugar Cane has always been one of my, one of my top rags from Joplin. Uh, the A section, as many people point out and many people notice, it's not a, it's not a mystery. The first section sounds sounds a lot like maple leaf rag, but sort of in a different kind of way. technique that's allowed because it's by the same composer who used the technique in another piece so he's sort of borrowing from himself in a way and I like I especially like the B section here Ooh, that's pretty bad let's try that again so you have you have the B section here uh, and then the C section. I especially like that. This C section here, the trio section, probably has some of the largest jumps in, in Joplin's uh, output here in the left hand. So uh, great, great rag here, sugar cane. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not mentioning the difficulty of these, but they're all they're all roughly around the same difficulty. So I'm not going to really get into how difficult they are because they're pretty much all the same. Uh, there's some sections of some rags are a little bit more difficult than others, but it's really very difficult to rank by order of difficulty. I mean, I really can't say what's harder, sugarcane or paragon rag. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. That's your decision. Okay, so let's go on to number eight, gladiolus rag. Landiolus Rag from 1907 is what I would rank uh, number eight. Great piece here. It's a favorite among Joplin connoisseurs. Let's see if I can tackle this. Have a nice B section there, and then the C section, trio section comes on. Okay, the C section here has the famous octaves in it, not the or one sec one uh, section that has the famous octave passage. Another one is fig leaf rag, which we'll get to in 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 a, in a while, but. This has these octaves, and, and actually most of these octaves are on, on black keys. So in my opinion, this section here is not 
terribly difficult. It's not as difficult as many pianists make it out to be because the octaves are mostly black keys and they fall well under the fingers. I would rate this C section much less difficult than the fig leaf rag C section. So don't think they're both equally as difficult uh, because the octaves are different in both. But the uh, gladiolus rag also has a, a final section, a D section, which I, which I really, really enjoy the uh, syncopated effect here. Uh, You have this uh, really, really great piece. I think that many pianists and many Joplin connoisseurs would rate Gladiolus Rag number one. I don't, though. I, I really think that there are some rags that are even better than Gladiolus Rag, which is number seven, Eugenia. Eugenia. Who would have ever thought Eugenia? Eugenia is, is a really unique rag, and what's really unique about it is simply that the melody simply seems like it goes on forever, and it has these very attractive um, syncopations sort of linked throughout the, uh, the melody. So let me play, first of all, let me play the introduction here from Eugenia. Uh, this, is, this rag is from 1905. up into a forte it's just you know these especially the a and b sections of eugenia really almost give me the chills they're so beautiful eugenia who would have ever thought eugenia eugenia is not at the bottom i can think of many rags that are i think of lesser greatness than eugenia eugenia is up there and we're getting to the top here so I, I, I rate Eugenia very highly. Um, there's a part in the middle of it that reminds me a little of Beethoven, actually, when, when he gets to... When, when he has that in the trio section, that actually is reminiscent of something Beethoven would have done. It's very Beethoven, Beethoven-ish, I guess, or Beethoven-esque. Eugenia, great, great work. Uh, what I would rate number uh, seven. Number six, the chrysanthemum. And this is from 1904. 1904, the chrysanthemum. Uh, he calls it an Afro-American intermezzo. Sometimes titles can be a little deceiving, a little strange. So, um, like Eugenia. For, for, for example, which I chose in the last one, Eugenia. It's not, not, a, not the sexiest title in the world, not the most catchy title. It's, it's named after a person's name, uh, so, which may be one reason why it never really caught on in popularity. Uh, but so I guess the moral of the story is uh, don't put too much stock in titles. Titles don't mean anything. It's really, well, I shouldn't say that. They do mean something, but you know what I mean. When, when you get down to the nitty gritty of the music, the title really doesn't, really doesn't say anything. So anyway, the chrysanthemum. Beautiful little intro here. It, it's so, it's <laughs> such a genius, genius introduction. Let me play that again.
section comes along. Really nice, uh, nice uh, jubilant B section here. He actually has like more sections in this rag than the other, uh, than in most rags. He has an A section, a B section, a C section, a D section, no, I guess he has four, four main sections, but it's the way that he goes back and repeats them. So it's really a, it's a really satisfying rag to play, the chrysanthemum. Uh, by the way, the, the uh, trio section has this, this beautiful little theme. Adds this little, <laughs> little theme here, really, really nice. So that's what I would rate number six, the chrysanthemum. Let's go to number five now, the strenuous life. And the strenuous life is one of those that I rated in a previous video, which uh, I called my the three underrated masterpieces. And so the strenuous life here, uh, I've played a little bit for you in my uh, previous video. section here then you have your your B section you have this and as I as I demonstrate in my other video on the underrated masterpieces I, I explain how how I like contrast between these themes uh, so you can you can go and view that video if you'd like for more on the strenuous life. That's from 1902. That's what I rate number five. Number four, sunflower slow drag. Sunflower slow drag has always been one of my favorites ever since I learned it at the tender age of about 12 or something like that. It's always been one of my favorites, and uh, Joplin wrote it along with Scott Hayden. So it's not all of Joplin's work, but Sunflower Slow Drag is, I think, one of the greatest rags ever written. I'll, I'll say that. A lot of us just take it for granted. It's a nice, cute title. Ah, Sunflower Slow Drag. Um, it, it, it is a great work. Sunflower slow drag, always one of my favorites. The uh, trio section here, Mark's piano, is beautiful and it's not easy to play. Like that. Okay, I'd play a lot better if I didn't have to babysit my puppy. But, um, and then, then you have the very, uh, uh, the very beautiful D section, which opens up here. You have that. <laughs> so you have sunflower slow drag. I didn't really plan this, but this is hilarious, actually. Making a, a video with a puppy with a squeaky toy. Okay, number three, the non-pareil. And the non pareil I talk about more in my uh, video, the three underrated masterpieces. Uh, the non pareil 
has always been one of my favorite rags by Joplin and one of the top rags. This is actually in this group of 42, this is number three. So that's pretty high up there out of 42 rags, number three, the non pareil <laughs> here that comes you have this uh, the melody it's sort of like a counter melody you have a melody in the right hand but you have this beautiful running 16th note line in the left hand that sort of acts as sort of a counter melody so you have <laughs> Greatest themes, Bach, uh, Bach. <laughs> one of the greatest themes Joplin ever composed, I think, is the B section from the Non Pareil. It's, it's a masterpiece, it's a work of genius. The trio section in the Non Pareil, not too easy to do. It's marked piano and it has a lot of octaves in it. And then the fourth section, which isn't too difficult, uh, comes to the conclusion. The Non Pareil number three. Number two, Fig Leaf Rag. Yes, you were probably wondering uh, when I was ever going to get to Fig Leaf Rag, and here it is, it's number two. One of the, one of the most beloved of all Joplin rags, Fig Leaf Rag, and I, talk, I actually didn't talk about this in my three underrated classics because, or masterpieces, because I don't think it's underrated. But Fig Leaf Rag. <laughs> And then it's got the very famous C section here. And that's what it sounds like if I play it and if I haven't practiced it in weeks and weeks or months. So it's kind of sloppy right now. But uh, if you want to play this section well, and this section is probably the most difficult section in all of Joplin's rags, this section here. So fig leaf rag isn't what I would consider uh, terribly difficult for the A, the B, and the D sections, but the C section is, this is, this is like just the thorn. <laughs> this is the thorn of the piece. It never goes away. It is difficult. It's even difficult for me. I have to, if I make a recording of this, I have to go over the C section slowly several times to get it back into my fingers. It's not something I can just sit down and play perfectly the first time through, as some of you might think that I do, but I actually don't. Uh, so uh, the C section even gives me some problems, uh, sometimes big problems, other times lesser problems. So I, I absolutely love Fig Leaf Rag. And you know, it made it to my number two spot out of 42, which leaves number one, Rose Leaf Rag. And I've just recorded Rose Leaf Rag. I love Rose Leaf Rag. I know that many of you probably do not cho choose Rose Leaf Rag as a top favorite, but I do. I really love Rose Leaf Rag. Uh, maybe, probably even more than fig leaf rag. That's why I put it number one. But you know, notice something that uh, in this year, notice that the year 1907 was a particularly great year for Joplin. Fig leaf rag, non pareil, and gladiolus rag, all from 1907. Rose leaf rag from 1906. 
So 1906 and 1907, uh, really Joplin really starts to really, really amp up his quality in these years, I think. So there's, there's something unique about those years, about, you know, I guess five, six, seven, and eight, those, those years in, in the middle of that decade, which are especially um, uh, a good time for Joplin and his output. So uh, Rose Leaf Rag, which, which I actually perform, you can listen to my performances on YouTube and listen to my commentary on that in my other video. <laughs> And then the B section. Yeah, that. And uh, you, you can view that more on, on my other video. So that there in a nutshell is what I would pick for the 10 greatest works out of those 42 works. Now, the question is, how would we rank the 10 greatest works or the 10 most famous works that we already did and then these 10 i guess we we could call them less famous works so now let's think about taking these two groups of 10 whatever your group of 10 is for the the famous works and for the non-famous works and then let's have a little fun with those and let's try to arrange those 20 into into uh, the order of greatness. So this will be a little fun game to do. So until that video comes and until we meet again.